Hi, I'm Ed with Chicago Fly House, and today we want to talk about deflection. Simply put, deflection is when something bends. And it's pretty important in most rigging systems because we want things to bend a little bit to take the loads, but we don't want them to bend too much. That can indicate that there's a problem. To really understand deflection, we have to understand three concepts. The elastic range, the plastic range, and yield point. The elastic range is when a material bends, but then bends back and is basically the same as it was before it was bent. If you think about taking a piece of theater pipe, Schedule 40 pipe, if it's a long piece of pipe, we lift it off the ground and it kind of curves up to where the person's holding it, but then we set the pipe back down on the ground and it rolls across a flat surface just fine. It's basically a straight length of pipe again. The plastic state is when we go beyond that, when something's been bent permanently. If you think of a paper clip, that's a piece of wire that we've permanently bent into the shape of being a paper clip. If we unbend it and we try to flatten it back out into a smooth wire, what happens is that we can't do it. There's little bumps where the permanent bends are. Those little bumps are the result of the molecules in that wire being a little discombobulated. They're a little bit shoved out of their normal crystalline structure, and that makes them weaker. How much weaker, we don't really know which is really why we get concerned about a bent pipe or a bent anything, really. Anything that's in the plastic state is indeterminately less strong than it used to be, and we don't like those situations. We want to be able to know exactly what our rigging system can do. The yield point is the point between the elastic range and the plastic range. It's the point where something starts to stay bent, and where that yield point is for specific materials can drastically change how they behave in a rigging system. Let's take a look and see what we can find out. All right, so what we want to do to test our deflection principles today is uh, we've got our brake tester set up in a little bit different configuration than we've done before. We have the load cell here uh, up on the top instead of down at the bottom where we usually put it when we're pull testing things. And so you see we have the pipe across the bottom held down so that we can pull up on it and then let it relax naturally back to where it wants to be and we can measure how much it goes up and then how much it goes down. Okay, we did our tests and we got our results back and they're basically in line with what we would expect. We see that it took about 2,000 pounds of pressure in our setup to permanently bend both the steel and the aluminum pipe. And what we see when we look at the numbers in more detail is that they basically adhere to what we would expect for steel and aluminum. For steel, we expect to see a yield point a little bit lower in its strength. What we're going to see is that the material is going to start to bend more drastically as we get close to that yield point. And that's actually what we saw in our numbers, is that the steel bent more as we doubled the forces involved. For the aluminum, we wouldn't expect to see that. We would expect that the aluminum, for every order of magnitude that we put more stress on it, we would expect to see the same amount of bend. And that's exactly what our numbers bore out. The danger in this is that aluminum is going to have that same amount of bend until it fails. The yield point for aluminum is very, very close to its failure point, whereas with steel, the yield point is farther down, and so it gives us a little bit of a warning. It gives us a sense when it's starting to fail. If you think back to one of our other videos, we talked about how we use thimbles with wire rope and that the thimbles get stretched out when we overload them. We use those thimbles specifically because they get stretched out. They give us a warning that we're going past where we should when we're loading things. Right? Aluminum doesn't do that, and as a result, we have to be very careful when we use things like truss. Truss makers are going to give us a chart that says, here's how much load you can put on the truss, and here's how much deflection you should expect to see. If you find that you're using truss and you're going over that manufacturer's rated deflection, you should stop immediately because that gets to be a very dangerous situation, and you can have failure without much warning. So I hope this has been helpful for you, and uh, thanks for watching. Subscribe to our channel if you want to see some more videos in the future.